All right, so we have our first texture fill. And you see how it affects the colors, the contrast, and obviously these little special effects of the twinkles of everything underneath it. And I have it on top of everything right now. It's set on soft light, and it's at 66% opacity, right? And if I like that, it definitely helps bring everything together. I like how it deepens the shadows here. I'm going to try to bring in another texture fill. Now this is all about for the sky, not for the foreground. And I want this kind of explosion of stars to be kind of peeking through. So what do I have to do? I have to rasterize it. I can try just taking its opacity down, but you'll see I have all those hard edges, right? But then what can I do? Well, I can use command left bracket or just move it down through the layers. So it is behind everything and in the sky. And maybe I like it just like that. It's a very easy way to composite. Or maybe I want to play with its blending modes a little bit. So overlay. These blending modes will help different parts of each layer come through. Or pin light is one I often use. It's a little too textured in the sky, though. Soft light is the one I used last time. But I think overlay, yeah, makes it more dramatic. Okay, now because they're rasterized, I can always erase away from these texture fills too, especially with a soft edged eraser. So for instance, if I don't want that little star in front of my mountain, I can just erase it. Right? And then if there's places I, I don't want it to be so dark, I can use this kind of big, soft eraser. And I'm just erasing from the texture fill right now. Right? It's kind of like dodging and burning, but using texture. But most, mostly I like what the texture fill is doing. If I'm being really picky, I don't want it cutting across the stalk of the plant. So I can go for a really small brush and just erase it right on the stalk. And I will get picky sometimes. All right. So now this is bringing to mind some other things. There's a pretty big difference if I squint between the drama of the sky and the this calm blue of the ocean. So there are other kinds of texture fills I can use. Let me save that. Those are my Hubble Space Telescope ones. What if I do just kind of a mist? So, or heavy fog. So here we'll have a heavy fog texture fill to go with some of my more spacey ones. I'm not seeing it, so let's let's try, instead of heavy, let's just do mist. There we go. So something like this. I'm looking for at least, really at least 2,000. Now this is pretty sharp edged. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like this will pay off. Nope, bugs me bugs me when they're misregistered. Darn Google. Yeah, I don't want to have to search through all those. So, mist, texture, fill. Images. And you can create this with brushes in Photoshop, but we're trying to do everything with compositing first. Tools, size, large. Okay. 
We got to check it. So there's mist coming off of a waterfall. This will work. Okay. This is going to soften up a lot. There it is. Bring it in on top of everything. Remember, whenever you bring in a layer, it's going to come in on top of the layer you last selected. Now I'm just going to stretch this like it's cookie dough up and over my most of my image. Kind of match that horizon line a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to rasterize it. This is a good way to do kind of moist in the air, or moisture in the air. Take the opacity down. All right, it's nice and misty. Play with soft light. Or pin light to get more of that texture, but I like the soft light. Maybe up the opacity a little bit. And then I'm going to get rid of the hard edge down here with 100% opaque eraser, super soft edged, nice and large. And what's great about having a mist texture fill is then you really can use it to kind of dodge and burn and decide what goes in front or what goes behind. I can push it back. You know, or pull it forward. So that helps to brighten everything. Okay, now what about like more mist? What about if there's like swirl of mist that's coming forward into the foreground? Well, I can make a duplicate of that mist layer. I'll just put it on normal at 100% so you can see what I'm doing. And I can just select a bunch of it like that, duplicate it on its own layer, move it down to the front, transform it just like I would anything, and then erase away from it with a 100% opacity, large eraser, soft edged. Right. And now I'm compositing with air. And I can take this and stretch it. It's basically putting a cloud on the earth, right? I can dodge and burn it in certain ways. We've learned all this stuff now. We'll get a lot more practice. I can kind of darken it at the back. Right. It's overdone, but it will show my point. And then I can take the opacity down. I can move it behind certain layers, right? Or just erase away gently from it with my eraser at low opacities. So now I can kind of clear the mist, especially as it goes into the foreground. And that will really help Kind of bring it all together too, all right? And then I can make a duplicate of that mist, Command J, move it up to the top, and have kind of these clouds moving through my image. And all of that will make a difference. And then one last thing. So this texture fill is really dramatic, but it's maybe a little sharp edged overall. So what I can do with that, I'll show it at a, at a normal so you can see, is I can go to filter, and the only filter we're gonna use quite a bit is blur, Gaussian blur, just to take the edge away from it. So it's not so sharp edged. And that way, when I turn it back to, I think it was soft light that I used, you see it's not as distracting as before I used Gaussian Blur. So that's what it was before, this is what it is now. Those little spikes. And then I can always erase away from that gently too. Especially in the foreground. Okay, last thing, a reflection. I have this big mountain, the water, but there's no reflection of it. So, easy little composite to do. Take the mountain, duplicate it, 
transform it, flip it vertically, right? So now it's a reflection. Hold down shift, move that down, and then move that above everything, right? Then erase away from it. and take its opacity down. So let's see, I want this behind the coral, right? But on top of the water. I can move it up a little bit. Now our reflection's always perfectly clear? Of course not. So we're going to use Gaussian blur on that reflection. Same thing, blur, go to Gaussian blur, you can set how much you want it to be blurry. And it's gonna be blurrier the further away it gets from the source of the reflection. So then I use my eraser, it's at 34% opacity, I start erasing away from it. Obviously this rock Not going to show. And by the time the water gets kind of chopped up to be in the foreground, there's no reflection anymore. It's just kind of a shadow. And notice it's all kind of dark. Or blurry. So I think I want to deepen it a little bit. So I can go to image adjustment levels. Or I could use burn. And I can deepen it. I think the burn tool will be nice. Just the mid-tones. And then just take its opacity down. Now with the texture fill, it's not as dramatic, right? So maybe I need to erase a little bit of that texture fill there. So that vegetation doesn't look so, so blah. So these are kind of all the components we're working with to make a fantasy landscape believable. And then once we're happy with it, hit Command S, save it, and crop down to what your final composition should be, right? And it doesn't need to match what your sketch was necessarily. But you want to make sure that everything's accounted for. So I might extend mine just a little bit higher because I like the sky. There we go. And then I can turn off my guides with command semicolon. Ah, but notice I want to check my edges, especially before I print. I didn't quite get everything at the top edge, so I need to bring that down a little bit more in my crop. I think my bottom edge, I think my bottom edge is okay. There we go. Okay, so there's my fantasy landscape. Now there might be little things I don't like that I can fix just on the fly very quickly. I'm going to take some internal compositing from here, from uh, the rock layer, duplicate that, move it up above. So some extra rocks there. And I'm gonna flip it. Flip horizontal, rotate it, scale it down. I'm going to blur it, Gaussian blur it, so it's more in the background. I'm going to set it to pin light. Nope, soft light. <laughs> yes, take its opacity down a little bit. I just need more shadows and variation in the water there. And then erase away the...